Thank you very much. So I'm sure you must have heard about this one there by uh, popular human rights activist Jaha Dukure. Uh, she recently joined DAI. Uh, that was a, a massive decision there by the uh, popular activist. So, I mean, she's my guest today. We'll talk about the reason as to why she decided to join DAI. Uh, over the years, what we have seen is that more and more women are coming, uh, taking ownership of politics in the Gambia. So the decision there by Jaha Dukure to join DAI is something that has been on the lip of a lot of Gambians. She is my guest today. Jaha, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you very you. much. Come thank you very seat. much, Lamin, for having me. Now, out of all the, first of all, let me ask you, <laughs> this is going to be a general question. Out of all the parties in the country, yeah. uh, why DAI? Because I, we have a shared value, a lot of the values that I believe in and the way that I think Gambia can advance and um, the Gambia that we all want. I see that DOI shares those same values like I do and that's the reason why for me, whatever I join, it has to be something that I'm truly passionate about and it has to be something that shares my values and I think DOI is one political party that shares those core values that I have. Now, tell us about those values. I mean, for instance, Gambia being one of the poorest countries in the world, um, I think a lot of Gambians don't understand the concept of socialism. And sometimes when we talk about socialism, especially in the Gambian context and in the PDOIS concept, a lot of people think that we are talking about communism or something that used to happen in China. But then one of the things that we need to realize is socialism is about free education, it's about better schools, it's about free health care, it's about better health systems, it's about um, sharing our wealth. It's not that people can't work to make money, but it's about having more equity in society so that people are granted same opportunities. It doesn't matter if you come from a poor background or you come from um, a less disadvantaged um, background or a rich background. You look at Gambia, for instance, some of us that come from somewhat rich families, we have better educations that are a privilege for us. But education needs to be a right for every single Gambian rather than something wherein, you know, the people that are higher in society can get better, like our ministers can send their children to the best schools, where in the poor Gambians, some of them are sitting on the floor. Recently we saw on What's on Gambia, wherein children can't even have desks and stools and we expect them to get that quality education. So for me, it's about equity, it's about doing what's right, which is one of the reasons why I joined PDOIS. Now, now this is a party that has been around for, for decades. I mean, a party that is older than a lot of parties in this country, actually, aside the, the, the older parties than such me. as... Of course, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Parties such as PPP, NCP, for example. But this is a party that has not um, um, uh, been able to achieve a lot. Yeah. When, I, when, I, when, I, when I mean achieve a lot, is in terms of um, taking power, for example. This party has not, not been able to do that. And you talk about socialism back in the day when they came. One of the arguments that was pushed has to do with the issue of socialism. People really didn't understand this. Yes. And the argument that was being put is that, you know, what these people are campaigning for is for whatever that you have, you do not own it. You will have to share it. Even even some went to the extent of saying, even your wife, you will have to share it. So that held Doi back in terms of growing. I mean, and I'm sure you must have, I mean, uh, learned, learned the fact that they has not been able to to really grow to that to that level. Yes. I mean, I mean, what do you make of that? What is your assessment in terms of uh, where Doi is now and the future? I mean, to be quite honest, I think that, you know, PDOIS as a party, um, traditionally the way they've gone about educating Gambians and relating to the average Gambian hasn't been up to the standard that I would personally want to see. But nevertheless, I believe that everyone agrees in this country that Halifa Sala is very honest and Sidiya Jata, as well as the people that represent that party, they've shown us time and time again that they will constantly put our country first and the needs of the Gambian first. So. Aside from the socialism for a poor country like the Gambia is what we need. Because if we're talking about corporate banking and community banking system, these are things that would benefit every average Gambian. It's not about taking something from someone that they already have, but it's ensuring that the basic things that people need in this country are provided to them. Yes, I do think that DOI needs to 
speak more of the language of the people and i do believe that people have a misconception about pdrs wherein they believe that it's a party that is for intellectuals and people that are highly educated and they can't talk um, to the average Gambian. So I think as a party, we need to take these criticisms well and we need to figure out what is it that for the past 30 years that we have not done so that the average Gambian can see themselves in us. How do we ensure that we change that narrative about the party? How do we ensure that we educate people so they know what these policies are about, so they know what these principles are about and how they benefit every single Gambian and not just some. Now, you, you, you look at the party, the, uh, the composition of this party, you have the older uh, politicians, the like of Alifa. I mean, well, these are people that uh, often people will uh, praise and say these are very honest people, uh, these are people who have the Gambia at heart. But then you look at uh, uh, the other uh, aspects. In terms of, for example, the young people in the party. Yeah. I mean, it's not a party that has also given a lot in terms of young people in the party. Yes. Till since the eighties, the faces that we have seen is the same faces that continue to be in the party. You are a young person joining this party. What have you come to discover in terms of young people being in the lead? In I the mean, party? so to me, I think one of the things that I want to make very clear is. I did not join a political party. I joined because of my country. I realized that Gambia is at a stage where in, if the likes of myself and the likes of you, Lamin, and other young people don't put themselves out there and realize that we are about putting Gambia first. So it's not about the need for me to be a politician, which is why I decided to join DOI, but it's about making sure that the mistakes that have happened, I mean, you look at the PPP era, you look at the JAME era, and now you look at the current administration that we have, we all can agree to one thing. Our country is not where we want it to be. And in order for us to accomplish what it is that we want to accomplish, most of us need, we don't need to wait for someone to give us that opportunity to do what is right for Gambia. We need to do what we believe is right and by putting ourselves out there. When it comes to DOI and other political parties, putting young people ahead, one of the things that we've all noticed, and this is not just a problem in the Gambia, but I mean across most countries in Africa, is that there's a certain level of um, entitlement because when people have fought for our freedom, right, and our democracy, and you know, that respect attitude and culture that we have. And a lot of times people see our generation as young and naive and people that don't have the experience or the capability to do some of these things. So I think, you know, there's an argument both ways, whether that's entirely correct or not. And I do believe that with the DOI Congress that just passed, it was people that represented the party that made that decision that they wanted Halifa as their leader and they voted democratically to um, vote in the executive members. And that is not something that, because that's the, the people that are part of the party, that's what they wanted. And we have to respect that. But I do believe that more parties in this country need to make an effort to include young people. Because when you look at a country like the Gambia, where in 65% of our population is under the age of 35. Exactly. And this is the population that is going to be voting for the next president. And you cannot have a party where you hold... Um, that 65% of your majority back or even women and women are not included in political conversations in the Gambia. Young people generally are not taken seriously when it comes to politics. For me personally, I did not join politics to be a politician. I joined PDOIS to help get Gambia to that next level. So do you think they will be able to, because it's going to, we are in election year, it's going to be a very, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, critical year, and you have the likes of Khalifa Salah who will be right there yes. to, to battle it out. And you have, you see, in the other parties, they, their leaders are also bracing for what is going to be a very innovating affair. Uh, in terms of Doi, do you think Doi will be able to? I mean, Doi's performance has been abysmal, has been bad <laughs> over the past elections. <laughs> so, if available records are anything to go by, you will realize that they have not been able to perform really well at elections. So, what are you saying? Well, that's because there was this a, year. there's a different energy. <laughs> so what we bring this yeah. year 
yes. is totally different from what you've seen in Gambian politics before. Yes. I think one of the reasons why I love and appreciate Halifa Sala a lot is he's open to new ideas. He's open to working with young people like myself to ensure that we bring that change and momentum into this year's election. So if you guys are expecting us to do business as usual, that's not it. If some of us are willing to put ourselves out there and be at the forefront of this, know that we are not joining this to lose. The only reason why I'm a part of this yes. is, is because I joined to win. To win. And we are going to win. You are going to win. We are going to win the 2021 elections. Uh, amazing. I mean, you go to UDP, they tell you the same thing. You well, go that's to, the you thing. Go to, you go to NPP, they tell you President Barrow will win. Well, I think they are all wrong. <laughs> I know. I have my reason. And trust me, yes. if I had... Because Gambian politics has been one thing so that... So President Barrow should start parking up? I think so. Because Gambian politics has been one thing that... I've always had this fear of joining politics because of how our politics is. But the reason why I think I built up the courage or mustered the courage to even say that I'm a member of DOI is because I've had several conversations with Halifa. And not only is his um, interest for this country right, yes. but I know that it's time that you know, we give them a chance and do what's right for our country. It's not about the crowds. It's not about um, the way things have been done. We need to all dig deep within ourselves mm -hmm and start pushing for what would help Gambia get to. And I'm a very jealous person. When I travel across um, West Africa, for instance, and I see what other countries are doing and how advanced other countries are, and I come back home, this is something that should anger every single Gambian and why we need to do what's right this 2021. We need to ensure that we're voting for the right people. Now, you look at uh, 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 your party, I mean, Dai, uh, you, you'll also realize that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of, um, I mean, excitement yes. around, the, I mean, really, really <laughs> I have seen that excitement around um, the likes of yourself yes. joining Dai. In terms of women in Gambia, yes. you will see that clearly over the years we have seen women taking lead roles in politics in yes. this country. But the younger women in our country aren't very much interested in politics. Well, you will see foot soldiers in, yes. in the political parties who are women. Yes. But you talk about our ladies, yes. they're not very much into into politics and now here here is Jaha. Uh, what, what, what do you have to, have to say about that? I think it's mostly due to fear because we're worried that when we join politics people wouldn't necessarily be concerned about what we have to offer but they will start attacking us and no one wants to be in that kind of situation but it's our moral responsibility. Gambia is our Gambia. This is our country and whatever we do is not something that I'm doing for myself but we're doing it for our future generations that are to come and 50% of our population is women and this is not about what they can do to us but it's about what we can give back to our country and I think more young women that are especially watching this today I think we all need to understand that this is not just their Gambia this is our Gambia as well and we have every right as all the men do to ensure that we are part of these conversations because when you look at our national assembly or when you look at policies that are being made if it's mostly men that are making decisions about our body and our rights then we have no reason to complain and the only way we can change that is by ensuring that we are there and the only way we would be there is by putting ourselves forward for these positions and, and basically you are saying that they shouldn't be afraid no of, of they being shouldn't insulted for example because yes. politics in gambia can be very nasty i know it can be very yes it, it can, can. Be very it nasty. shouldn't be that way though yes. i feel like we are all gambians and we gambia is so small that we are all family and i think political parties need to be more matured just because i'm part of pdois doesn't mean that i'm against UDP doesn't mean that I'm against President Barrow, doesn't mean that I'm against all the other political parties in the Gambia. It just means that my values as a person identifies more with PDOIS than any of. A lot of my friends are part of UDP and we have amazing conversations like Pater PJ of UDP. He doesn't get along with most Gambians, but he's actually a good friend of mine. And, you know, there's more and more people like that. So I think we just need to be more matured and and how we talk about politics in general and knowing that all of us, there's a common reason why we are in this. It's about Gambia and we need to keep 
it at issues rather than personal attacks on someone's um, reputation or who you think they are and sometimes going as far as bringing their family into it so i think that's degrading and that's not the type of politics that i stand for now let's try to get into Khalifa's mind a little a little more yes. uh your leader he will be the person that will be your battle axe in, yes. in the election in december did you meet him what is he saying is he confident that he will be able to to finally, finally serve this out. Finally, finally cause an upset. Finally, finally, Alifa president. So what I love about Halifa Salah, I've met him several times. I think, um, so I think the thing about Halifa that most people might not know is that the first time I met him was in 2016, right after the presidential elections. And then ever since then, since I moved to the Gambia, I constantly go to his office just to dig into his head and see what he's thinking. And... I think over the years, he just thought that I, you know, probably I'm not as serious as, um, but I wanted to understand, you know, is what I think of this guy, is that truly who he is? And I realized one thing about him, to him, it's not about becoming president. It's more about getting all progressive minds that want to be an architect of our destiny as Gambians to come together and work out a solution for our country. And that is very rare in African politics. You don't see leaders that are saying that it's not about me becoming president, but it's about what would move Gambia forward. And with Halifa, it's about the issues. Every time I sit down with him, it's about, you know, free education. It's about solutions. It's about health care. It's about how do we actually push for system change. So it's not just about, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. But it's about the solutions that are going to help us accomplish that system change that we need. Because right now it's not about regime change. It's about actual system change in the Gambia. Have you seen any weakness in him at all since 2016? No, I haven't. I think that... Um, He's one of the most decent human beings that I've ever met in my life. Um, his humility is one that inspires me. And I think that, you know, I do, one of the only things that I would say is sometimes I do think that he's a bit rigid. Exactly. I was going to say yeah, that. I'm Look very, you, I'm sorry. So yes, I do think that he is a very, he is, you know, sometimes because I, um, I think I'm different. We can't all be the same, right? Just because I love someone and he inspires me a lot doesn't mean that, you know, there are certain things. Of, yes, so sometimes I do think that the way he thinks and the way the party in general thinks is somewhat too rigid for the average Gambian to understand. Yes. But now you have people like me that are also part of the party. And if you know anything about me is that we don't keep our opinions to ourselves. And Fidio IS is one party that has welcomed those opinions. And I think we are going to have conversations on how to make the best use of what we have. So we bring you know, the people that are from the opposite spectrum like myself, and then you have the people that are more rigid in how they've done business. But again, this election is not about anything else, but it's about system change and it's about doing what's right for Gambia. And I think we all need to just come together and ensure that that happens. Good. Now, let me ask you this. The state of things in the Gambia. Yes. I mean, you are a Gambian, you must have seen what has what has transpired, uh, you know, in terms of our development, yes. where we are and where we intend to go to. Uh, what is your take on how things look? Because, for example, we are supposed to get a new constitution, but it would appear that that is, <laughs> that is, that is, that is, <laughs> that is, that is a, uh, a failed project. Yeah. So there is a lot of things that have been happening uh, over a period. What do you make of in terms of the President Barrow administration and how things are? What have you seen? Well, I will talk about the constitution, right? I think that there's a huge amount of consultation that was done to get this constitution to where it is right now. We are talking about millions and millions and millions, right? And, you know, the people that were in charge of drafting this constitution went out in our communities and had serious conversations with the people. And I think denying that constitution to go to referendum is denying the Gambian people of their will. And I don't think anyone should be allowed to deny us of our constitutional right and something that we should be able to do. It's not because of politics, it's not because of anything else. And I think what is going on right now is actually denying Gambians of that right that they have. This constitution, this draft constitution, should be allowed to go to referendum. And that way, Gambians can decide if they are going to vote for it or if they are going to vote against it. And that's the only thing that is acceptable to someone like me.
So who, who, you, who do you think is responsible for all these problems? That are I mean, I think it's the pe- it? I think um, the not only does our current administration have a role to play in this, but I think our parliament also should, um, you know, be blamed somewhat for it because, you know, there are certain things that um, they have a right that they can push, right? They can come together. All of our parliamentarians, whether you're NPP or you're UDP or you're PDOIS or you're a member of another party, right? If something is going on that um, is against every Gambian's constitutional right, right? That is something that we should all fight. And so if the president is the one that is holding this and dragging it, right? Parliament should be able to challenge him and not just let him get away with something like that. I guess that's my opinion. And, and now let's generally uh, quickly on on the president borough administration the president it's been four years since he came to power uh, uh, between zero to ten how would you rate him in terms of his performance do you think he did well because he say, said he has done a tremendous job and he's just uh, going to continue doing that so i think my comments wouldn't necessarily be directed at president barrow and his performance i would rather you know, not comment on that. But I think generally, right, Gambia is not at a place where I'm happy with our country. I think we need system change in this country. It's not at a place where, in, where we should have been in the place that we thought we would be five years ago. I don't think we are there. And so that's, you know. Let me take you back to Khalifa Saleh and the role they played yes. in the 2016 change uh, from the lead up to the to the election, to the formation of the coalition, to really the impasse and the role that Halifa played. He was exactly. uh, kind of like the face of the entire, everything really that happened. Yes. What do you make of that? I'm sure you must have been watching that from it, far. Yes, so I was in the US at the time. I think a lot of people don't realize that I moved back to the Gambia in 2017 and with my children and I've been living here since then. And, you know, watching him put himself out there. To me, it's not even the things that he did behind closed doors, but it's the fact that, you know, whenever there was something that Gambians were not happy about, this was the man that went out and spoke to us. This was the man that you would find in the markets in Sarakunda. He was always like, um, almost the person that came to our rescue every time Gambians were afraid or there was a crisis or something that needs to be settled. And to me, I think that's where my admiration for him started. Because it wasn't about him just standing for political issues, or but it was about him putting Gambians first and putting Gambia's need at first and ensuring that this country doesn't shamble in front of us and that this country doesn't crumble in front of us. And I think Khalifa has showed time and time again that he's willing to put himself out there, that he's willing to do that for us. And I think that is commendable. And it's something that every single Gambian should be proud of and it's something that every single Gambian should admire about him. Now, you are an activist, a human rights activist, well, with emphasis on women and girls. Yes. You run an organization, Safe Hands for, for, for Girls. How do you intend to go about blending, mixing and blending, or balancing, if you like, activism and politics? So I am an activist, yes. and, but I stepped down from Safe Hands a few years ago, so I no longer run Safe Hands for Girls. Yes. Mom Lisa Kamara is the head of the organization. And um, so I'm still an activist wherein I um, still work on the issues that I care about and if they need me in the field or when we have activities, I do go out in the field. But I am also Gambian first, before anything else. You know, um, before I became an activist, before I became Jahad Dukure, the first identity that I had is the fact that I am Gambian. And to me, this is a form of activism. It's not Jaha becoming a politician, but it's about Jaha advocating for Gambia and what Gambia deserves. Yeah. So now the issue, your activity, activism has largely centered around FGM. How is that issue going in the Gambia? I mean, do we I think, still have FG, FGM in Gambia? Yes, we do. I mean, FGM is something that... Um, really? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, FGM has been banned in the Gambia, but of course there are people, especially my Sarahule people and the Fulani people, you know, they believe that this is um, Sunnah and they believe that this is part of their religion. But then you look at a country like Saudi Arabia, they don't practice FGM. You look at a lot of the Sunni Muslim countries, FGM is not part of their tradition. I think as Safe Hands for Girls and many other organizations that are working on ending FGM, 
one of the things that we need to do is to continue working with communities in a very respectful manner so that they understand that yes this is our tradition but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's mandatory in Islam so I do think that it's not as prevalent as it used to be I think FGM has gone down significantly in the Gambia but I do believe that it is still happening and your work took you to as far as the United Nations and then uh, I remember you meeting with Imam Fati, top top Imam over this, <laughs> that was a <laughs> kind of like a face off, a showdown between you and Imam Fati over this issue. Looking back at those <laughs> years and, and to now, and to now, yeah. in terms of uh, <laughs> communities and your activism, in terms of the impact, what can you tell us? What impact have you made in ending this practice in Gambia? I mean, I think um, not only with Imam Fati. I mean, I think back in 2014, I met with President Jame. And before Jame, this was at a time when every single Gambian was probably afraid of Jame and what they can do. And if you remember during those days, every time I came into the Gambia, I used to come because we were filming my documentary, Jaha's Promise. Yes. And I used to come with camera crews. And I remember we followed Jame on tour. And that was probably the scariest point in my life. So it was a scary thing to put yourself out there, especially during a time where no one knew where Jame stood when it comes to FGM, whether he was pro-FGM or he was against FGM. And that could have costed me my life, but it's about taking those risks and, and that led to us having a ban against FGM in the Gambia. And you look at this country, you look at other organizations and the work that they are doing, and you look at an organization like Safe Hands that is not only working on FGM, but is also pushing women's economic empowerment by supporting gardening initiatives for women in the North Bank region and supporting to build wells and boreholes and all of these things that we are doing, right? I feel like we have taken a holistic approach to women's empowerment and realizing that in order for us to truly support women, it's not only about focusing on simple issues that Im impact their lives or specific issues that impact them, but it's about looking at a woman as a whole. I think we've made a lot of progress, and not only me or Safe Hands for Girls as an organization, but every single person that has dedicated their life to ensuring that this practice doesn't continue affecting millions of girls around the world. And I think um, we are moving in the right direction. I do believe that we still have a long way to go, but I do believe that we are moving in the right direction. And you have this claim that activists uh, are mostly driven by money. Is this true? No, it's not. I mean, I think that, like for instance, one of the things that I want to be clear to Gambians is I have a full-time job that has nothing to do with my activism. I work for the World Bank as a senior consultant. And the work that I do is on the Sahel's Women's Economic Empowerment for Demographic Dividend, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in seven countries in Africa. So a lot of us wake up every day with our jobs. If I don't support Safe Hands for Girls with income that I make from other sources and what I call my side hustles, I cannot make money. Yes, one of the things that I do want to admit is I ended up being who I am because of the activism work that I did with Safe Hands for Girls, right? Mm -hmm. It has opened a lot of doors for me. It has um, turned me into a global brand, if you would say. But it wasn't because when I started doing my activism on FGM, I had no idea that it would turn out the way that it did. And that wasn't the driving factor. I made a lot of sacrifices in order for me to do the work at the time. Most of my family didn't believe in me. I lost friends because of the work that I did on FGM. And so right now, everything that I do, I mean, as you know, I'm one of the international spokespeople for L'Oreal. Yes. And with anyone that knows what's going on around the world, right? You know that usually the people that become international spokespersons or get big endorsement deals like that are the likes of Beyonce, Eva Longoria, and these are A-list Hollywood celebrities. But to have a Gambian, and that comes with a lot of um, earnings and payment as um, for me to sign up for that endorsement deal, right? It's not something that I'm doing for free. So a lot of those in income that I make on the side is something that I use to not only support Safe Hands for Girls, but a lot of the work that we do in the Gambia. Like you remember when COVID started, we were able to provide 2,000 bags of rice to most communities in the Gambia and also some cash to help women who were struggling, most of them widows and single parents. So it's not only, and I think Gambians need to understand that. Even though activism has given me a platform wherein I'm recognized everywhere in the world, but I've also used that 
same platform to give back to my communities. And now that I realize that, you know, I have more to give, which is why I am courageous to be part of politics. I realize I have nothing to lose. Even if I woke up today and I ended up losing my contract with the World Bank because I decided to endorse a party, I am not afraid of that. If I end up losing my title as a UN Goodwill Ambassador, I am not afraid of that because I'm, I've passed a place where yes. I allow all of these things or these narratives about who I am to control what I do for my country. Now, give us your last words as the uh, 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 Jahad, the Doi, new Doi adherent or new Doi convert. <laughs> yes, so um, I think one of the things that I want to say is to me, again, this is not about politics. This is about putting Gambia first and this is about system change. Yes. And I think a lot of people need to understand that and understand that we're all Gambians first. And we all need to realize like i just because i joined doi doesn't mean i'm against others in the gambia and so i just want to thank you as well for the opportunity to be here and you know say my two cents whether <laughs> um, people get it or not and um, I think we will get it. yeah so That's i'm uh, i'm very humbled um by the opportunity and allowing me to use your platform to have a conversation with Gambians because I think a lot of them might hear that I joined Doi and might not understand why and people might even be judgmental of that action but I just want to assure Gambians that it's about my country and I have every right as everyone else to choose um, where, where, where to be. Exactly. And also again for emphasis sake Doi is winning. Yes obviously like I guarantee what is the date today Lamin? Today should be the 16th of March. 16th of March, 2021. Yes. I want you to put this date down. When I sat down here with you and I told you PDOIS is going to win this election, whether we are going to do it alone or as a coalition, but this 2021 election, we are going to win. Yeah, good luck to thank that. <laughs> Jaha, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, so that was my guest, Jaha Dukure, uh, the newly joined uh, people, uh, Doi Doi, Doi there, uh, as the new, one of their new members uh, there. She was my guest today. Uh, thank you for being there. Thank you. We'll be back tomorrow until then.